Hello and welcome to this After Effects tutorial for marmoworld.com. My name is Matthias and I want to give you here a quick overview over the increment at marker eye expressions. These come in different flavors. So in the library we have the movement modifier bundle and in the movement modifier bundle we have different markers. We have change at markers that like do certain things at markers and after the marker is gone they disappear again these changes and then the increment at marker that like create changes of property that stay. So um, if this sounds a bit weird to you just take a look at the examples that I find pretty intuitive that we are going to look at now. We have increment at marker for 1D, 2D and 3D properties. Let's start with the 1D variant and this is how it's looking like and let's say we have here such a text and we want to animate its opacity at marker such that it gets step by step visible. Yeah, so we set the opacity to zero and then we say at each marker it should increment by say 10%. Yeah. Then I can just apply this eye expression, apply, you can see the number becomes red but so far nothing happens. And now if I start adding markers to this layer by selecting it and going to layer at marker or hitting the numpad star key on your keyboard, you can see here if you look at the opacity here it's 10 before it's 0 and behind the marker it stays 10. Yeah, if I add a second marker here, numpad star it gets 20, third marker here numpad star now here it's 30. So with each marker 0, 10, 20, 30 yeah, the opacity increases a bit. Now we can even control this more by adding comments to these markers. So we can click on this marker and say at this for example 50 which means at this marker please increase the opacity by 50. Yeah, now you can see here we have 0, now 10, now 20 and now 70. Yeah, because at this marker it changes by 50. You can also put negative values here like minus 10 or so to decrease it again. And also maybe you don't want these changes to be so abrupt. Yeah? If you don't want them to be so abrupt you can set some global fade in. So you can say each of these should fade in over 10 frames and you can choose either linear, exponential in or exponential out. Let's choose here exponential in. And of course we need to select the properties that we want to apply this to. So select here the opacity and click apply. Now you can see it's not abruptly but here over 10 frames you can see here it's it's 1 and now I come a bit closer it's 2, 3, 6, 10. Yeah? So it's like bit uh, more uh, uh, slowly goes into this new state and also here where it goes to 50 this is a bit uh, more slowly. Also this fade in can be controlled at each individual marker so let's say for example at this marker here or to make this in total more visible let's first increase this here to say 25 and I apply it so now you can see here it jumps to 25 here it jumps to 50 and here it jumps to 100. Yeah, because here it increments at the default of 25, here also 25 and here 50. And now let's say we want to create the fade in a bit differently. So our, differently. So our default is it fades in over 10 frames. And let's say here we don't want to fade it in. So we can double click it and write here just zero frames as a comment. Now you can see here we have now an abrupt jump from 25 to 50 without any fade in. And you can give this time either in frames or in seconds. So or you can also say something like 3s for 3 seconds. And now here we have a pretty long fade in from this point in time actually. So over, over three, 3 seconds it already fades in. In this case actually the 3 seconds is even it's already starting here to fade in. So even if these fade ins of the different markers overlap it doesn't matter. Yeah, From, from this point on it already starts fading in. And if you don't see that it's already starting fading in here it's probably because we've set this to exponential in which is um, very slow fading. You can see the details of all this fading when you take a look at the expression graph. So we enable here that the graph for the expression is visible and look at the graph editor. Now you can see at the second marker here where we've set <coughs> to fade in over three seconds from here it's really gently fading in and here these are all these small fadings that just fade over 10 frames. Let me set the fading to linear so that you can see this also apply. And now you can see the fading becomes like a straight line and here we have a very uh, short 
straight line and this is really long and slow fading that goes here over the entire three seconds that we've specified. Uh, so this is the very basics of these markers. Just specify here the default for how slowly they fade in and here how much they increment. And then uh, at the comments you can specify like you can override the time that it needs to fade in or you can override the value by how much it should increase or decrease. And this is the same actually for, for 1D, 2D and 3D values, except that for 2D values like scale or so you would set this value here not like 50 but say 50, 20 to say we want to change the scale by 50 in x direction and 20 by y direction. But let me cancel this for now and delete these markers and show you some more useful application of this. So one good area where it makes sense to work with these markers is with audio. Yeah? Often you've seen in many of my tutorials that I generate markers. Either I, I generate them automatically with some tool like our Beat Assistant or I also set them manually according to the music. And here I have a few such markers that fit to our audio track, to the beat of it, so to speak. And now we can directly link stuff to it. So um, let's say this time we do not want to change the um, opacity of this layer, but it's rotation. And let's say at each uh, marker it should ro rotate by 20 degrees and we have again a fade in and now we change also the marker source because this time we do not want to use the markers of this layer but from not also from the composition but from an other layer. And this other layer is this audio layer. Yeah, Here are the markers in this uh, case. So it's also nice you can use markers from any layer. So just enter here the name of the layer audio here and now we apply it to the rotation. And now let's take a look at this is what this is looking like. You can see in general it fits uh, to the beat, but it also seems to be a little bit too late always. It's like with the fading, I would love all of these animations to start like a little bit earlier. And of course you can now take all these markers and shift all of them like two or three frames over, but you can also use this frame offset here that says like for example minus three means imagine each of these markers uh, is moved three frames to the left. Yeah, It's like the animation start earlier if you use such a frame offset of minus three. And if you apply this, let's see how this is looking like. Ah, and now it uh, looks much better since it's really in sync with the music what is happening here. And of course you can now uh, also connect arbitrary other properties to these same markers. So let's just for the sake of an example use here the uh, marker uh, increment at marker 2DI expression. Okay, and let's say the scale which is a 2D value should also increase. Yeah, It's like at each marker the scale should increase also by let's say 20% and again we need this frame offset of minus 2 and again we want to have a fading of 10 frames exp in for example and we also need to adjust here the layer source take markers from the other layer namely the layer audio we apply it to the scale and now you can see with each marker the text is growing Oh, like this. And if you just wanted to grow and go back again at each marker, then you need instead of the increment at marker, you also have here in the movement modifiers the change at marker. Yeah, this is like the same, but not that it's increasing the value over time. But uh, let me just show it to you. So let's say at each value we want, uh, let's say, to go 30%. Uh, that we want to add to the original value. Yeah, from scale 100 we go to 130. Also, again we have this frame offset, say minus two. Marker source, all the same. Other layer, audio, and also the fade in out. Uh, also, that here you don't don't have just one fade thing, but you have several, and this is because yeah it goes back and forth, and you will see it. Let's say we have a 
fade in duration of 10 frames and a hold duration of 0, which means don't stay at this value, but immediately after fading in to this growing, uh, go to the fading out. And we can also choose here different um, fading types. Here the fading types are a bit, expon a bit different because you just have linear and exponential. And if you apply this one, now you can see at each marker it grows and go goes back again. Uh, and now in total this then looks like this. Okay, not too fancy, but in general what I really like of this is that it's completely interactive. So if I decide to delete here one of these markers, then also at this point you have no movement. Yeah, it's like all individually you can shift these markers, you can move them however you like, and with audio this is really a convenient thing. Another example where these incremented marker eye expressions make a lot of sense is for the Video Copilot plugin Sure Target. If you don't know this, check the Video Copilot website. It's a free plugin from them and it's really great. And it's for pointing the camera automatically to different layers. So in this case, I have here four different text layers, for example, that I weirdly placed in 3D space. And in Sure Target, I've set uh, four target layers. Here the exactly these four layers. I've chosen here to be the four first targets. And then we have here this sure target value that I also have here. And currently it's set to one. Therefore the first title is uh, in focus here. I can set it to two. And now the second title is in focus and I can set it to like three. Now the third one is in focus and to four and now the fourth one moves into focus and normally you just keyframe this short target value here and set the first keyframe to one. Yeah, like this. Here I have like the first element in place and now I want to transition to the second one. So I set here a second keyframe for two. Uh, now we have our transition from first title to second title and now I want to stay at the second title for a while so I make another keyframe and then I again one second later for example I want to be at three and so on, uh, like this. But now you can do something even better and what you now can do is to say I apply an expression to this here to automatically increase it by one step by step. Uh, because then you don't need two fray keyframes, one at the uh, beginning and one at the end of the transition, but you just need one marker and this makes it, in my opinion, much cle more clearly visible. So, um, Let's set this here to 1 at the beginning and remove all keyframes. Now it's always at 1 and now we say increment at each marker by 1 and we want her to have a default, f default uh, fade in duration of let's say uh, 20 frames. And we set it to exp in for example the transition type. And now I click um, apply. And now nothing happens. We are always at the first title. And now when I want to go to the second title, I just set a marker on this layer like this and bam, we are at the second title. And now here we want to be at the beginning of the third title. Bam, here is our third title. And before we have a nice transition and this transition, the beginning of this transition is exactly 20 frames uh, before this point. Yeah, It's like for all of them you can now change the transition speed uh, simultaneously. If I So let's take a look at this or maybe let's just add a force marker also here. Let's just distribute them uh, oops, a little bit like this and take a look at RAM preview. Uh, this is our great camera move. Second title, third title, Force title and, uh, and if we now feel okay all of these camera moves should be a little bit slower we can just set the fade duration to like something like 40 maybe and reapply it and all of them now update automatically. Ah, now you can see our transitions happen much slower but all of them in a consistent speed which is really nice. And if you want one of them to be uh, slower or faster again you can do annotations here like say this one should have no or have very fast let's say just uh, five frames. 
like this. Now we have here a very sm slow transition, and from this one to the next one, it's really fast. Uh, because we said just five frames to transition from here to here. Really convenient. And of course, you can also write other comments here that the I expression does not understand and it doesn't matter. So you can, for example, let's say you create a template and you want to make it as easy for uh, the template user to modify your project. You can just call this here um, second title. Uh, and now you know here is my second title visible and here you can say let's forget again about this change of five frames transition let's here say third title and now whomever opens your project immediately sees ah here starts the second title here starts the third title and so on um, without needing to look at any keyframes so it's clearly visible immediately and it updates automatically. So it's like if you say, okay, here I go to the second title, but now I want the second title to come later. It should actually be here. Well, no problem. Here it's the first title and now the second title is exactly at this point visible. So this is a really clever automatic way to like highlight the, the, the key events in your animation, namely where the camera changes with these markers. You can even label them and everything is live linked to these markers here. Okay, and that's it already for this tutorial. I hope you got a good idea now what you can do with these increment at marker eye expressions. Now, most of the time I've really used this 1D variant, but the 2D and 3D variant really work in exactly the same way. Just use the 2D or 3D variant if you need to modify yeah, 2D uh, properties or 3D properties, like if you want to shift the position of a 3D layer in space at each marker, you obviously need the 3D variant. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, my name is Matthias for marmoworld.com and I'm looking forward to see you again in the next tutorial.